All righty, you're welcome along. It's Golf Weekly. We're delighted to be here. I'm back, Nathan Murphy. I know you missed me the most. I'll tell you what, we've had so many podcasts since you left, Joe. No, we haven't. How many have you had? One. One, Joe. Just one podcast. Well, and I even guess... that was, um, you know, harshly treated by the listeners. Really? No. I guess not much has happened. Only Rory won, Tiger won, and a few other bits and pieces besides. We have a special guest today. She's in studio, Stephanie Meadow. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in. It's great to have you. So the plan is to uh, chat about everything that's been going on in the world of golf and first to uh, chat a bit with you. You're over here with the good people at Now TV. Mm -hmm. So they are celebrating the arrival of Sports Extra Pass and Now TV. And so you, alongside Devon Toner, Stephen Hunt, you're going to be at Dundrum Town Centre, level three, this Saturday from 12 to three. It says here taking part in a special skills challenge. Oof. Yeah, I'm a, a bit nervous. <laughs> what sort of skills? Um, golfing skills? So there's well, golfing skills and rugby skills and uh, soccer skills. So. <laughs> well, Devon Jones is a very yeah. tall man, as I'm sure. I've heard six eleven. The interesting thing about Stephen Hunt, who obviously was a former uh, footballer, is that he is an avid golfer and he hits his drive off the ground. Oh, he does. He doesn't tee up his driver. Ah. So I mean, try and sort that out for yeah. him. And that's the, yeah, least, and that's the <laughs> least peculiar thing about yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully his chipping's not so good because we're going to have a contest of hitting, you know, the various sports into the hole in the wall. Uh, so um, that sort of stuff yeah. must be a nightmare when you're the so. actual professional. Yeah, yeah. Because they can get lucky. <laughs> yeah, true. And you end up looking yeah. like an idiot. Yeah. That's true. Well, you know, throwing. A lot of my friends will say is not my uh, greatest skill. So. Um, I actually got a rugby ball from Investec this morning <laughs> and they were to, to practice. Oh, so, um, well, I'd rather just not make a fool okay, of myself. So, yeah. Just you know. a tip I wouldn't ask Devin how the World Cup went. We'll leave yes, it at that. I'd heard, yeah. Uh, Stephen likes to hit, yeah, yeah, you can ask him about it. He hits his drive off the deck, a massive kind of high cut, mm. Bubba Watson style. Interesting. He's, uh, he says he can't hit the ball off the tee. Anyway, Sports Extra Pass available on Now TV. It gives you access to BT Sport and Premier Sports without a contract. So you're over here pushing that. Do you get home often? Um, is this, this home? Is... is this home? Yeah, it's still home. Yeah. Um, you know, I have all my family here and, you know, I come home probably four. I think this is my fifth time home this year, so it's been quite a lot. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to come home. The weather, <laughs> it's so rained nice. all day today. Glorious. So, uh, you know, for golf-wise, I you know, definitely would prefer to practice in Arizona <laughs> and not here. But, um, no, I still love it here, and it's still home. Is it, is it windy in Arizona? Um, it can be, but the weather, you know, winter time is just the perfect. Yeah. Like, you can't beat it. Um, Where in Arizona? So, um, Peoria, so just outside Phoenix. Okay. So I have two golf courses out there, um, one in Scottsdale and one in Peoria. And, I mean world-class practice facilities, so I'm just, I'm very lucky. Is Scottsdale, after like Palm Beach and Jupiter, is that the second most popular place for golfers to live? Yeah, I think so. Um, we really don't have that much option. We gotta go Florida, maybe California, but that's super expensive, so nobody wants to go there. Um, so yeah, Scottsdale, I mean, at my club, John Rams at my club, um, Kevin Streelman, Christy Kerr, Anna Nordquist. So I have a lot of girls to, and guys to kind of play with and And would and you get go better. out together? Is there a nice community? Yeah, we do, yeah. Um, just, you know, we're mostly out there every day and we just say, okay, you wanna go play nine or, and have some games and matches and... Nice. Uh, have you so played John Ram? I have not yet. Um, he uh, he just shot 59 out there the other <laughs> the other he's week. Very good. So uh, he's very good. Um, <laughs> little, yeah. He's so go that maybe guy. yeah maybe this off season I'll be able to um, kind of yeah. get a match with him. Maybe I want him on my team as opposed <laughs> to playing him. So yeah, yeah he's so pretty if you, good. If you guys saw each other, you know the way we hear about Harrington and Nairi who love to have chipping contests, and it's mm -hmm. a way to really put a bit of oomph into the practice. Is that the kind of stuff you guys are going in for as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, it makes a difference, and especially. You know, I like practicing with the PGA Tour guys because they are really good and they make a lot of birdies. So, you know, you got to step up. <laughs> you yeah. can't just make three birdies and no bogeys and expect to win. So, well, you know, that's an interesting one. So, obviously, um, distance, there's obviously a difference in distance mm -hmm. between male and female players. What about around the green? Um, I think it varies from player to player, but I still think the guys, they have a lot more sh shot options like they're really good at the high ha high shot compared to what we are I think right. so um, I've kind of picked the brains of Kevin um, and you know just kind of see how he does it and if I can kind of bring that into my game and he's picked my brain about putting quite a bit <laughs> um, yeah so it's kind of it's nice and you know when when I play good he texts me and if he plays good I text him so it's it's just nice to have that connection because there'd be no obvious I mean it could be wrong there'd be no obvious physical reason why a female player wouldn't be good at flop shots in comparison to a male player yeah not really there shouldn't be um, I think the guys are 
less afraid to kind of hit it harder, you know, get okay. some more spin on it, whereas the girls try to like baby it a little more. So. I don't want to blade it across the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, they're not, they're willing to get up there and, whoop, you know, yeah. and uh, we don't see that that often in the women's side. Which we can all do in practice, oh, but yeah, under yeah, for massive sure. pressure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a ballsy choice, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of, you see a lot of girls actually now are practicing like off the putting green, um, so that it's super tight lie. So, well, if I can do it there, technically I should be able to do it in competition, but it still takes some guts yeah, yeah. to be able to do it. Because it's placing now mm. for the next couple of months here, so we're all hitting flop shots around the green. Yeah. We're all <laughs> it's a joy. Oh, not only that, if, if I play, I will just hit my three wood from everywhere. Yeah. If I'm in the rough, it's going up in a nice yeah, yeah. little <laughs> tee there. Oh, you know, yeah. Boom, it's a thing of beauty. Stephen yeah. Hunt's hitting driver from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Christy Kerr yeah. strikes me as a sort of Phil Mickelson type figure in terms mm -hmm. of early week practice in that she'd be eyeing you up and taking a lot of money off people. Yeah. Um, she's an interesting character for sure. Um, I've actually gotten to know her quite well and behind the scenes you know, she's a lovely lady. She really is. Um, which you is know, she aware I know. Of the perception that she's, she is. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, she'll I'm probably watch this now. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, though, like you know, I had a point in the season there. I think it was at Arkansas, and we were staying together. And she, uh, I had missed the cut. She had missed the cut. And this was, I think, maybe my fifth missed cut in a row. Yeah. And uh, you know, she was there for me. Like I'm busy. You know. I'll admit, crying, whatever, you know, it's tough, golf's hard sometimes, and uh, she was there for me, and I didn't expect that really from, you know, she's going to be a Hall of Famer, and um, that was kind of nice, especially since she just missed the cut too, so obviously she's kind of annoyed, but um, so I think, you know, she's super intense, I'll tell you what, I've never seen anybody practice so intensely in my entire life. She's not out there for a long time, but there's a lot of intensity, and I think I kind of learned from that as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, she's we call her Kerr Brain. That's she's uh, she just does Kerr things. <laughs> and we is, love her. Is her form of being there for you? You just need to toughen up and shut up crying, or is it? Mm -hmm. I understand this is you know you're you're allowed to be upset, and it was kind of a bit, bit nicer. Yeah, I think a bit of both. Um, More of the tough yeah, shut up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, you know, she's big into plans and you know, okay. figure out a way back and how you're going to get better and, um, which you know, at, at that time when you're crying, you're you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. Right yeah, yeah, I can't it. handle that. But um, you know, but to hear that from a person that's you know won as many times as she has, um, you know, she had a tough year this year too. So. Um, it's just very encouraging. How legendary is she? How successful? What's she? What's what's her kind of what's her um, career? A big achievement. Major wins. Yeah, I mean, she's. I think she's made over like 25 million career. So on the women's list, that's pretty far Serious. up there. Um, I mean, she's in her 40s and she's been out since she was 21, I think, or 22. Mm. So, um, you know, like I said, she had a tough year this year, but she'll be back. I think as well, the Solheim Cup sort of. Mm. I don't want to say created the perception, but she was very much seen as the all-American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That there was no stepping back when it came to the Europeans, that it was, she wore the, uh, wore the colours with pride. Mm, she does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously very disappointing for her this year not to be able mm. to have made it, but, um, you know, she'll, she'll fight back. I mean, she, she loves that intensity. Like I said, she's an intense person, so in that Solheim Cup environment, she's going to thrive. Yeah, not everyone's their best self in the Solheim Cup environment. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a strange couple of days. Yeah. So look, congratulations, LPGA Thank Tour you, Card. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've, you've popped up, I would think, on a lot of people's Twitter feed or in different places with this on the 18th green. 25 footer, I would say. Yeah, about Left, that. right, yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah. On the 18th to finish 99th on the money list. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you need to be in the top 100 and yeah. secure your card for next year. So this is big, and we were just saying outside the LPGA tours on Sky Sports all the time. So mm -hmm. we're kind of looking forward to seeing you now popping yeah. up hopefully on Sundays as well. Uh, standing over that 25 footer, do you know how important the putt is? Yeah, 100%. Um, walking up to the green, there's a, well, there's a leaderboard on 17, and there was a leaderboard on 18. And I had a fair idea going into the day that I probably needed sixth or higher. Um, I knew T7 wasn't going to be enough because mm. it was a pretty small purse. So I just, I just knew it wasn't going to be enough. And um, Georgia Hall, was, I was playing with, and she's one of my best friends on tour. Yeah, British and, Open uh, champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, so that was nice to have her right there as well because I could, you know, her and her boyfriend Harry were, you know, cheering me on, and um, you know, an 18 T. I looked at her, and she just kind of nodded at me, and I was like, I need to make birdie, and she's like, Yeah, you do, <laughs> and she knew it. And um, so tell like, us about your second shot in, because you yeah. feel you, so you're, you're gonna, I gotta get close here. Yeah, I had seven iron, so it's actually a weird hole. So there's a bunker in the middle of the fairway, so you can either take it right or take it left. But with there's drive, water on yeah. the left with the drive, um, and so left's more risky, but 
the green goes like this and it's back right pin. So left is way better angle than, and we saw it probably 150 in. So I took the risk of going down the left. Um, and then I had, I can't remember the exact yardage, 150 something, and I had seven iron. Um, pulled it just a little, but it was pin high. Um, so but you like felt you okay? said, yeah, I mean, but still 25 feet. Like, yeah. you know, I can't remember the percentage, but it's not so that great. Yeah. Do you, do you have to yeah. psych yourself up and not walk up to the green, right? Yeah, I it's guess. Low, it's a low percentage chance, I know, but I have to really I just give knew this a I go. had to do it. And like, there's nothing worse than Q Series, and there's nothing worse than, um, you know, being on the LPGA again and then losing your card and having to fight back. Like, I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to prove that, you know, I can be out there and, you know, I can compete. And um, there was just, I don't even honestly remember what my thought process was over. It was just kind of a blur. Did you um, take much time trying to get a read? Um, I saw it pretty quickly. I mean, it was a big left to right breaker, so there was no kind of is it left to right, is it right to left. Um, Which helps. What, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But still, um, you know, it was kind of downhill a little too, so it was a little quick. And I just left the previous one short on 17, so that was kind of in my head. And, um, you know, just get it there and give it a chance. And um, honestly, I mean, <laughs> I haven't been that hyped on it. I mean, I almost, I made it, fist pumped, um, <laughs> walked over to Georgia, and she's in tears. I'm about to cry. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, and MB Park's over there like, well, you know, oblivious, because yeah. she doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, she's got no idea. So, um, yeah, she's probably like, wow, crazy. Yeah. Um, Raise so, your expectations, yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, come like, on. Come on, yeah. Um, so that was kind of funny. So I, yeah. I said to her when I gave her, I was like, that was just to make my car, just so you know, because I didn't want to think she was, you know, I was some weird person. God, but, it's amazing. Because, um, like, if there's one thing everybody listening can relate to, it's standing over a 25-footer. You know the odds are I'm not going to make this. You know, yeah. it, and even for a professional, the odds are yeah, I'm no, not going to sure. make this. Yeah. So wow, when it goes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just kind of felt like it was meant to be. And mm. thank goodness, because, you know, I've been down that path before and it's not any fun. And uh, I'm just kind of ready for my career to go this way and not like this. <laughs> yeah. You've obviously stood over important putts before throughout mm -hmm. your career at various different levels. And like any sports person, you've had important moments and steps mm -hmm. along the way. Does that feel like the most important moment for your career? Um, it's definitely up there. Uh, I mean, confidence-wise, and you know, it's a, it's my job. I'm guaranteeing my job next year. It's my livelihood. So, um, yeah, I'm starting to learn that I actually perform really well under pressure, and uh, this whole calm, collected stuff um, isn't really my style. <laughs> right. um, which is interesting because you know, for years, psychologists have been kind of telling us over and over again, you know, breathe, think of the process, don't think of the results. And, and honestly, if I hadn't stood there and looked at that leaderboard on 18, I'm going to guess the chances of me making that putt are pretty slim because mm. I just, there was no urgency. Like I could have been, I'm the person that would have been over it guessing, oh, is it enough? Do I need to make this? Do I not need, and then I'm not really focusing, you know. So you need the fire. Uh, so I need, you need the fire, yeah. Um, and I've really just learned that in the last probably three months. It's funny, I read an interview you did with Johnny Waterson in the Irish Times recently mm -hmm. enough, and you were remembering, you know, 22 years of age in 2014, literally your first professional tournament mm -hmm. was the US Open at Pinehurst, yeah. and you finished third. Yeah. So that's a bit nuts. Yeah, you know, it is, yeah. Just kind of mad, <laughs> yeah. really. Uh -huh. And you talked then about coming out with lots of fire and intensity mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. And it's funny, the 22-year-old had a bit of that when she came on tour and played in that US Open. Yeah. It takes I mean, a couple of years to figure out what works for you, I guess. I think so. Well, I think, you know, when you become in a, an environment like the LPGA, you know, you're at the bottom of the pack again. You know, in college you were at the top and now you're at the bottom and you're trying to fight your way there. And sometimes, you know, if you have that fight, you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm 100th in the world, so I don't really know if I need to have that fire or, like, I need to be calm and collected and, and that sort of thing. But, I mean, if that's... I'm not saying it works for everybody because there are some people who get fiery and it just doesn't help. But for me, it, it definitely works. Are you naturally fiery? I'm just wondering when you go yeah. back out on tour now that I guess for a moment like that yeah. of that importance, it's easy to get up, to be emotional about it, to, yeah. to understand what it means. And for majors, it's like that. But yeah. when you're out on tour now and it's your run of the mill event, mm -hmm. have you thought about how you get into that state of mind where, yeah. where you're not just quite calm and ah, mm -hmm. whatever happens, happens? Well, definitely. Um, you know, it's the same thing every week, so it can get a bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, honestly, I'd been working on the whole intensity thing from, I think Toledo was my first event. Um, I went and saw a sports site called um, Debbie Cruz, and uh, she talked about intensity and you know little things like it might sound silly, but like she, you know, trying to trick yourself. Like imagine you have a dial in your hand or whatever, and you're you know you're turning it up, like you're turning the volume up, and just little things that you can do, even though you're 
obviously you're not doing that, but mm -hmm. it kind of tricks your brain yeah. into thinking. And just the way you talk to yourself, you know, saying things like, um, you're terrible. Yeah, yeah, that, you suck. yeah. And then like, well, like um, you know, like standing up and saying like, watch this, or like um, you know, more fiery things as opposed to just okay, I'm going to hit this at the tree, and yeah. you know, um, yeah. it's just a little bit different mindset, and it's definitely helped me a lot. Really, and would you think about I don't know, listening to music beforehand and get yourself going yeah. that way? Yeah. So um, I <laughs> I listen to techno before I play golf, and um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it does, it gets the, you know, juices flowing a little bit and, you know, and I do notice like at the beginning when I started working on it, oh, this is easy, I can be intense every day and then you get to like the third week and you're like, Tiring. you know, it just gets, so you have to be able to turn it down on the golf course and then turn it back up again and and manage it because you can't oh, so be 100%. Be between shots you'll try yeah, and come back down again A wee almost. bit, yeah, okay. and then build yourself back up again. I mean, obviously there's certain situations where you're going to have the adrenaline and you can mm. be high the whole time. Ride that, but yeah. You know, in the first round of any tournament on a normal week, you're not going to have them that much adrenaline. Mm. So. You're landing down at ten past seven on a yeah, Friday yeah, morning, yeah. absolutely buzzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is up with this one? Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, yeah, I know. Tweet but Stephanie. Sure. Tweet Stephanie any techno recommendations? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's open. Yeah. Uh, I'm not to kind of drone on about 2014 that U.S. Open, but seeing yeah. it's come up and finishing third, and you're straight out of Alabama, where I was reading, you basically left the career record holder mm -hmm. in pretty much every category going. So you blitz yeah. Alabama. Mm -hmm. You must, like a lot of rookies do, come out full of confidence and expect yeah. to do well. Mm -hmm. So how do you look back on that 2014 US Open? Can you remember much of it given it was like your first pro event and it probably whizzed by in a... Yeah, it was pretty quick. Um, you know, I remember the crowds that week were huge because it was right after the men's US Open at Pinehurst, the same site. Oh, yeah, Martin so, Keimer won um, that year, yeah, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I think that kind of, I remember that and the crowd, and obviously I was a new face and people were behind me because it was a good story. And, um, but you know, thinking about it now, I, you know, f finishing third was great because, you know, money wise, financially, being able to kind of carry me through, I didn't know it at the time, like that I was going to struggle. How much was third in the US Open? Um, I think it was 270 something. Oh <laughs> yeah, <my> yeah. God. <laughs> so that was my first oh, check. Wow. So that was turn, pretty surreal. Turn that yeah. up to 11. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That must uh, be so amazing. Yeah to have a truckload of money arrive in your bank account. It's yeah. not often talked about in sport. No, yeah. It's amazing. Like yeah, you're a normal just, person. Yeah, pretty much went from like zero, like coming <laughs> out of college to, uh, I can't remember, and I'll never forget it. There was, I was in a scoring tent and there was this sheet, like, you know, first place gets this amount, second place gets yes. this amount. I'm looking at third and then I like, there's a leaderboard over here and I'm like looking at the leaderboard. And I'm like, <laughs> Doing the math. What is, like, okay, yeah, yeah, just you know, a blur, but. Shall we yeah, won that year, didn't you? She did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and you know, as great as it was, it was a lot of pressure. Like, you know, I came out fiery, I came out, I can do this. And then it all, all of a sudden became, oh, hold on a second. Like, I just finished third in the US Open and everybody's gonna think I'm gonna win now or I feel the pressure to win and do well. And so I think fear became part of me, um, which obviously, you know, now I can look back on it and recognize it, but I don't think I recognized it then, you know. You tightened up. Yeah, I mean, you just, it's different. You're thrown into limelight. It's not college anymore. You start thinking about, you know, I hadn't even had a chance to get used to being on the road for 30 weeks a year, you know, paying for all my expenses, dealing with a caddy, you know, there's so many different things that go into it. And that's why you see rookies, you know, take some time, but, um, and it definitely took me some time, but. Yeah. And did you, was your, uh, the game you played when you finished third as a 22 year old, was that you? playing so much better than you ever played in your life before, maybe because of some weird mix of adrenaline, or was that a similar standard to what you'd been able to hit in Alabama? Um, I think it was pretty close. I mean, I played great that week. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I made pretty much everything I looked at, but I wouldn't say I hadn't had a week like that okay. before. You weren't going, wow, yeah. what's this? Yeah, no, no, I wasn't super, like, wow. <laughs> yeah. um, which felt good, obviously, because yeah. I knew I could do it. And, so yeah. that suggests it was just a tightening up then mm -hmm. afterwards. If yeah. you, you know you didn't completely outperform yourself, it, it was a yeah. mental, mental yeah, thing, I guess. Yeah, I think guess. so. Um, yeah. you know, and pro life is just different. Like, it's just, it's a different ball game than college. You know, college, you have teammates, you have a coach, you have everything done for you. You just get on the bus and go and fly and that's mm -hmm. it. Like you don't even have to think. It's comfortable. And, yeah. yeah. Um, Are you totally on your own? There's nothing in place and the LPGA Tour, four rookies coming through to sort of um, help you through that first year. Yeah, we do have, um, they call it pods. So you'll get like one kind of, I guess veteran and that has like five rookies and go to dinner and they try to help us with 
you know, just caddy things and what's the caddy rules and, you know, how do you pay them and all that sort of thing. Um, and just the week to week stuff. So, and then there's rookie orientation for you know, a solid like six hours, I think, <laughs> you know, no one, because some of there's rules out there and, you know, when you can withdraw, when you can't and just, mm. you know, different things and fines and stuff. I'm sure. And then for people listening, and I, we're not going to focus in on this because this is a happy chat and I want to talk about 2019 mm -hmm. or 2020 more than anything, but it's worth for people who may not realise your father passed away then. Mm -hmm. And that was a massive blow, obviously, and who knows how complicated the grieving process is. And I think you missed 11 cuts in a row in, was it mm -hmm. 2015? Yeah. So trying to contend with turning pro and then that, when you look back, yeah, <laughs> that's a tough time. Yeah, it was tough. Um, the, you know, anybody that's gone through it knows that it just it doesn't necessarily get easier. It just gets you get used to it mm. over time. Um, and with my dad being such a big part of my golf career, and you know, he wasn't my coach or anything, but he was always there. And yeah, it sucked. <laughs> golf was just a big reminder of him. And for a while, it kind of resented that because okay. I didn't want to be reminded you know I didn't want that because it was too hard mm -hmm. um, but now I can you know I'm so glad to look back on the memories and look back that he was there in 2014 for the US Open you know like I didn't know that was going to be you know the best result that he's going to see mm -hmm. in person out of me and um, so I'm just really thankful that that all happened. I guess not every parent and daughter get that kind of moment. Yeah you know, exactly. Kind of amazing yeah. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah um, you know and anybody that knows him knows he was super passionate and very um, loud and uh, <laughs> so I could hear him the whole time and you know how you can hear your parent like you know yes. you're like oh god yeah 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 but he was ecstatic and I mean you know they sacrificed so much for me um, so you know props to them they you know he deserved to see that he really mm. did when did you start to find your way back did you feel and get back to the game that you had at Alabama and felt yourself yeah um, probably last year really when I was on Symmetra, oh, yeah. Only last year? Um, yeah, I mean, I really struggled. I mean, 16, 16 was tough, 17 was tough. <laughs> um, and you is know, that I had like an injury and emotional just, and on the course? Or yeah, more? I think so, okay. yeah. I just think I was I, just a blur. Like, I don't, I don't know, that part of my life is just, I don't remember a whole lot, to be honest. Like, and I think I just mentally block it out now. Mm. Um, but. It does take time and you know what when you start playing bad and you go through stuff and then your confidence gets hurt and then you think it's you and not the circumstances and it's a long way back from that you know from thinking that to you can't clearly. do it to now you know believing in yourself and stuff again what prompted it or what were the first signs of things getting better or was mm -hmm. it was it up and down and one two steps forward and three yeah. back at times or was there a mm -hmm. was there a moment um probably you know when i won on symmetra at the start of last year um, I kind of got this oh I can do this again and even though it's on Symmetra like you know there's still decent players and I was seeing that kind of Alabama as good golf I can play you know mm -hmm. I knew it was coming um, and I was more comfortable and confidence was starting to come back so I think from there you know it, I had a pretty good year obviously I had a dip in the middle of this year but um, or the start of this year but it's just a learning curve. Golf, I don't think, is ever going to be like this. No. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I would love it to be, but um, it's going to be up and down, and just hopefully at the end of the day, I'm going to be further up than I was this year. Mm. What does holding that putt to finish 99th mean, mm -hmm. actually, for the next yeah. year for you, in terms of you've experienced that Symmetra Tour, that second rung of the ladder, which I'd imagine is pretty grueling in terms of mm -hmm. even the sheer expense of it and the stress of, of that side of the game again, which people don't really talk about. What are the differences that will happen in your life over the next year because of having the assurance that you actually mm -hmm. have your card? Oh, I mean, I get to schedule, <laughs> you know, plan my year and um, I don't have to worry about money qualifying or going back to Q Series, which is just a nightmare really um, for any golfer, um, you know, and I just peace of mind I think that okay I can go out next year I don't have to worry about reshuffle or anything like that and just go play like go keep doing it I mean I made a lot of money in the last I would have to look at how many events it was but seven or eight events you know I made probably a hundred grand so if I just do that every seven eight weeks <laughs> I'll be good to go yeah 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 it was me and Nathan yeah, really yeah, that's yeah. about how yeah, we yeah, said yeah. that earlier <laughs> yes yeah, minus the 50 in expenses yeah yeah um, what does it cost yeah. to spend a year out on tour on the, um, the Symmetra Tour, like what, what do you uh, need to earn? I love all this oh. money talk, by the way. I'm <laughs> getting, yeah. getting the good stuff. 
Um, it's not cheap. Um, I'm sure, yeah. I stay, let's see, I stay in a lot of housing, so like host families, so okay. um, so I don't have to be in a hotel every week, which I actually really enjoy because you meet some really cool people. Um, Is that like the tour put, suggests yeah. we, we'll put you stay in this house and they'll pay for your accommodation kind of thing? Or um, you pay no, cheaper no, like rate? you stay with a family. Yeah, yeah. so um, like generally it's members of the golf club that we're playing mm -hmm. at and they'll just open and they'll say hey we have a room and it's free and um, it's free. yeah mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool um, so you're down for breakfast with the family yeah pretty much <laughs> you know and it beats a hotel room I mean I'm sure um, and then some weeks we do Airbnb but um, you know you're talking LPJ tour probably hundred and twenty five thousand um, dollars and that's kind of being conservative on mm. you know accommodation and yeah mm. it's, it's a lot yeah <laughs> how many events will you play um, hopefully, you know, if you play all the majors in Asia, you're probably looking at 24, 25 for the okay. year. Yeah. Is that tough going? Um, you know, once you get to October, November, <laughs> you're pretty homesick, I think. Yeah. You know, it's just tough living out of a suitcase. But, um, you know, if you're playing really good and you can pick and choose and you don't have to play everything mm. um, and space it out pretty nicely, um, that makes a big difference. And I presume a real skill and a real art for players of any standard right up to Tiger Woods is picking mm -hmm. the courses that are going to suit you. Yeah. So are you going to take advice from people or do you know the courses to go to? Are you pretty familiar with all that scene? Yeah, I'm pretty pr familiar now. Um, there are definitely a few that you know are long and soft which wouldn't suit me. Well, kind of suit me. I mean I had a good year in driving distance so <laughs> I guess it's coming more into my game than it used to be in the past. Um, so you know we're lucky though with the LPGA schedule, you know, there's four weeks, week off, four weeks, week off, or something along, along those lines. Um, so it's less picking than what the PGA Tour would be or the European Tour, you know, where they have an event every week. Mm. Obviously, you can't play every week. So um, so we kind of have to follow that a little more. Okay. And so what's your what's your, your game then, your strengths, weaknesses, driver, mm -hmm. irons, around the greens? Give us the, um, the overview. Yeah. <laughs> Putting's always been like my top. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's kind of my go-to. Um, I would say my chipping actually wasn't that great this year, looking back on all the stats. Um, you know, I think like short game, like inside five yards off the green, like even standard shots, like that's so important, <laughs> not yeah. only from a mental standpoint, but you know, if you miss a, an up and down from just off the green, like it's such a momentum killer. Yeah. And um, you beat yourself up on yeah, the walk. Yeah, and it's two. just yeah. yeah, it's just a it's you can't score well like that. So I think I'm really going to focus in on that, not necessarily the flop shot or anything else, but just making sure that okay, if I'm five yards off the green, it's a normal chip shot. I'm going to get it inside three feet. Yeah. You know, not have to make a five footer or a six footer and be stressed. And the beauty of this is you're talking to golf nerds who are listening to this. So they're yeah. they're kind of Hi. into this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're in the club. So how do you play those shots? bump and run do you play mm -hmm. it with the same club every time or is it different clubs um, mostly my 58 and my 54 um, would you hit a bump and run with a 58 yeah um, well not a bump it well I'd hit a standard shot so okay. it's gonna fly Good. like maybe two-thirds of the way there or maybe half depending on the firmness of the greens but yeah. um, you know I don't chip a whole lot I might do like a pitching wedge but I mean in America there's not really seven iron bump and runs that often. You don't so. see, in the men's game, you don't see a, a nine iron or a seven iron been taken out that often no, in a little bump and run. yeah, not anymore. Um, so, you know, 58, uh, sometimes I use my, well, 48, I have pitching wedge on a 48, actually, but, um, so I use those for longer ones, but, um, you know, just a standard shot, making sure you're making the same contact every time on the same yeah. ball flight every time. I mean, it sounds easy, but oh, no. it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one thinks it's easy. Yeah, yeah. What are the uh, core setups like at the LPJ? Are mm -hmm. they set up to be birdie fests generally, or? Oh, that's a big discussion every player meeting. <laughs> um, so you know, some girls want longer. Some girls want more reachable par fives um, for everybody. Because right now, compared to the guys, like. We barely have any reachable par fives, like for the field as a whole. Oh. Um, you know, and then some people want the odd drivable par four, and it just kind of—it's you can't satisfy everybody, right? <laughs> it's mm. pretty tough. Um, and are the so, greens generally lightning quick? Um, yeah, the majors, like U.S. Open and things like that, will be really quick. Um, they do a good job of keeping them about the same for most tournaments, so that's kind of nice. So you don't have to adjust every mm. week so much. Um, but I think the biggest thing I saw this year was our pin positions got a lot harder. Um, they're starting to tuck them a lot more um, to try and eliminate the kind of birdie fest. But then on the other side of that, nobody wants to watch 
you know, three under win, so in my, unless it's a major, in my opinion, and it's no yeah. fun. Yeah, in a major there's enough tension to get you through and interest mm -hmm. to get you through, but yeah. in a normal event... You need birdies, you need you do a little cheering bit, yeah. and clapping and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> those, those player meetings you talk about, what are the big biggest issues that mm -hmm. face the players and that they're aware of? Um, oh, it's just week to week stuff. Um, <laughs> because I think from the yeah. outside, one of the biggest yeah. issues will be slow play. Oh, it's one of the biggest yeah. criticisms. Oh, is, yeah. Is yeah. that you, something that you, you guys are slow as well? Yeah, we're oh, we're also. You're yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. The, the Solheim uh, Cup was like. Oh, I know. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Is that something it's, the players are aware of? Yeah, it was brought up at our last player meeting, and. Um, <sighs> It's really hard. I mean, there's so many different avenues that you, we could take to try to correct it. Um, I don't know which one we're going to take next year. Um, you know, players are given ideas left, right, and center. And what are the different you know, type of options? Um, kind of a red card system where you know every three holes you might get a warning or um, just more on top of it because we don't have a ton of rules officials and we have great rules officials but there's only five or six of them out of the event um, so sometimes when a group gets behind you know four of them are doing rulings and two are on the other side of the course and it's just like impossible to get to that group so um, so that might change possibly um, I mean, they do a great job. They're great people. I love them. Um, they, they really Blues are. Officials. Yeah. Great guys. No, yeah. No, seriously. Um, yeah, we have no, some seriously. really good ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, that sprinkler head. I, yeah. Maybe I just I mean, couldn't stand there. They're, yeah. No, they work really hard. Like, they're there from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. And, yeah. you know, yeah, they just sit in a cart all day and drive around. But still, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know. I don't know. We're, the, our biggest problem is, you know, we get a warning, then we get timed, and then the slow player gets really, really quick, and then there's no time, there's no penalties, there's no timing to finds. Yeah. Like, you know, it's hard to get people to be on that timing mode yeah, yeah, all, yeah. the whole round. So, I have no idea. I mean, we take probably five, fifteen, around. It's a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting about the par fives not being reachable. Yeah. Like the men's game, if we talk about it ever, and routinely, it's how the ball needs to be addressed or the equipment needs mm. to be addressed, and mm -hmm. the ball, it's just going too far now. Yeah. So that, that's not affecting the women's game in the same way. I don't think so. I yeah. mean, it, there are definitely, you know, different courses that have a lot of reachable profiles, but in general, you might have one, maybe two, but it would have to be like a tee up or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's the case for me. You know, I think I was 60th on the money li or 60th on driving distance this year, so I'm fairly up there. What would I'm you not, What would you drive the ball? I think my average was like 260. So, okay. um, but I'm not getting to that many par fives. Um, you know, Lexi, that kind of group um, are definitely getting to a lot more. Obviously, you know, they're 280. It's a different ball game, but mm. um, you know, in general, the average players maybe getting to one or two. And I mean, it's a discussion. Like, you know, is it? Do you give the distance that big of an advantage, or you know, do you? I don't know. It's. <laughs> I mean, I'd like it to be more reachable par fives because I think you know, the closer you can get, the better chance to make birdie. Um, regardless, um, that's kind of my philosophy. You know, forget laying up to a yardage if it's 80 yards. An 80 yard shot is way harder than a 30 yard shot for me. So, yes, yeah. um, so I don't know. Well, it'd be interesting to see. Sometimes uh, the European Tour male players, when they go over to the States, talk about how it's far less collegiate. You know, the European tour, after mm. a round, everybody is in the hotel lobby. There's always people yeah. to go for dinner with, whereas mm. they find maybe it's money, maybe it's just the culture, but on the US tour, different players have their entourages. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're just away, and you're kind yeah. of, oh my God, where is everyone? Right, yeah. So how collegiate is it? You know, are you, would you go for dinner with Alexi Thompson? Would that kind of stuff happen, or is it everybody's ensconced in their own entourage? Yeah, I think it's, it's not quite as grouped as what the PJ tour would be, because the PJ tour guys have, you know, most of them have wives there, children there, physio there. Yeah. Um, some of them have chefs. Um, Their life's you know, on the road. They almost. have yeah. that group with them. Whereas on the LPGA, it's it's not really like that. Like some players, if their husband's there or boyfriend's there, they might be on the bag, or they only come a couple weeks a year. So I think, you know, we don't have that entourage, so we tend to mingle a okay. bit more than what the PGA Tour would. Um, it's good. It's collegiate. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's yeah. definitely. You know, like anything, it's clicky. Like, <laughs> you know, we have the European group, and um, you know, the Americans and the Koreans stay pretty much together. And um, but it's, you know, it's fairly friendly, I would say. Um, you know, it's competition at the end of the day, and we're all competitive. So <laughs> we're reading uh, between the lines here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, on the golf course, uh, 
we want to kill each other and yeah. off the golf course we just have to be friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have to be friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to friends. Nobody wants yeah. to be out there alone and would true. suck. That's yeah. True. So So 2020. Mhm. Mm if we're sitting here in a year's time and hopefully we are, what will you class as I'm happy with that. That was a, a very acceptable first year back on the LPGA mm -hmm. tour. Um, you know, I think I kind of had the same number in my head this year, uh, like top 50 in, in the money list. That kind of gets you into everything, gets you mm. into Asia. Um, you know, I think that would be a great starting point. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not easy to do. There's a lot of great competition out there, so it's, but it's close, right? It's maybe only one or two shots, you know, here the and there. Are crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, like everybody says, we make 80% of our money and 20% of our events. So it's those five events where, you know, maybe instead of finishing sixth, you finish second or, you know, that makes a big difference. So, um, you know, hopefully I can do that. And obviously the Olympics coming up next year. Yeah, um, amazing. Which I'm pretty sure we, Leona and I will be good to go, mm. I think. Um, so, you know, obviously that's going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm guessing just as good as last time, if not better. And because um, I kind of know what's going on and mm. um, I can look forward to it. And, you know, uh, medal there would be unbelievable. It wouldn't be bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wouldn't be bad at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Olympic medalist, pretty cool. Yeah. Have you spoken to anyone about the Olympics yet? You know, matchups running at this time? Yeah. Um, I haven't had that much communication yet, but um, I know, you know, the drug testing thing's going to start soon and it, like there's all this like paperwork stuff. Right. Um, so I'm sure that'll be hitting my email at some point here. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how often you'll be tested. It'll be interesting to see. Because um, it's going to yeah. you know, be tricky. You know, uh, is LEMSIP allowed or not allowed? You know, there's all, the, yeah, all this stuff you can get caught yeah, out on yeah, already. Yeah, we do, yeah. Um, so the LPGA, um, it's even blood testing now on the LPGA as well. Um, I actually did not get, I'm thinking about it, I didn't get drug tested this year, I don't think, which is shocking. Um, but um, so, but yeah, the Olympics, I think, you know, you, they can randomly pretty much show up at any time and, okay, mm. you know, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you suspect would players be taking in golf? to improve their performance? Yeah, I don't know. It's tough to know, because I don't really think, like, it's not exactly like you can bulk up and play better golf. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, Hit it but further. It, yeah, but then, yeah, I know it's... But your technique it's, needs yeah, to be... Yeah, your body changes, yeah. and um, I don't Baby know. Walkers. Yeah, um, some of the kind of more mental side of it, you know, mm. relaxing and... So that um, CBD oil was kind of yeah. doing the rounds a bit last year, didn't it? And there was a lot of yeah. you know, that's, that's chewing legal. gum. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there's there's a risk oh, that yeah, there's something in it. That, tiger and... Yeah, because yeah. they say that um, there could be still trace amounts of THC or Which whatever. Which is against the rules, yeah. yeah. And because um, we, you know, all our vitamins and supplements have to be... Um, NSF or trusted by sport, um, which are, you know, they examine what's in them to make sure what's on the labels actually in them, okay. um, which is a bit scary thinking about normal vitamins. Um, <laughs> but, um, mm. you know, so uh, no company will give CBD a, um, that logo to a trusted by sport. Um, okay, they so, can't guarantee it. so then, you know, it's at your own risk pretty much. Okay. Um, I mean, if you test positive, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Olympics actually funny. Getting on to other stuff, unless mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm sure we'll ask you more questions about you, but in the midst yeah. of it all, Shane Lowry's been talking about the Olympics. Uh, so he's over in Turkey at the moment. Justin Rose is going for his third Turkish Airlines uh, win in a row, which is kind of nuts. Olympic champion, Joe. That's true, actually. Yeah. Justin Rose, Olympic champion, yeah. I'm sure I saw him with that gold medal around his neck somewhere. Uh, Shane Larry says, I'm not 100% on the team, I, but I've already booked my flights for Tokyo. <laughs> which I liked. That's so he's, he's flying over the Wednesday after the Open. He was asked, would he like to carry the flag? He said, I wouldn't say no. Uh, it'd be a big honour. Who will carry the flag? I would say there's a very good chance Shane Larry will carry the flag. Yeah. I mean, open champion, I think. Would you? It'd be pretty cool. They generally go for somebody quite high profile so that when mm -hmm. you come out, mm. the American t television announcers will stop and go, it's Shane Lowry. And everyone will go, oh my God, it's Ireland. Right. And yeah. then the cameras will probably stay on your clothing manufacturer a little bit longer yeah, yeah. and all that side of thing. All the key stuff. Yeah. The other options. Can't help but notice Rory McIlroy is just behind him, who <laughs> also is quite high profile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, somehow yeah, I don't think Rory's yeah. going to be carrying that flag. It'd be a hell of a statement. Yeah. If he did, wouldn't it? Then yeah, he's probably definitely. in a position if he mm -hmm. wanted to. Do you want to carry the flag? Staring yeah. at that camera um, right there. Yeah, just, sure. Uh, <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I can't think of a greater honor, really. I mean, yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
yeah, yeah who knows? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Shane, maybe Rory, who knows? Maybe you, who knows? Maybe me, yeah. <laughs> um, so he's uh, talking about a few different things. He is uh, feeling pretty good about life. He's going to play the race to Dubai, so he's, this is the only event he's going to play in the meantime. And Justin Rose is there. So yeah, Rose is gone for three in a row. Only three other players have done three in a row at an event in the European Tour. Do you want to hazard any guesses? Okay. Uh, no. Tiger Woods. No. Really? Oh, well, I think in like, oh, okay. this is European Tour. Co-sanctioned events, I think he has. Right. He's the WGC thing. But no, just European Tour. We're talking golden era here. Seve. No. I was going to, did someone win the Irish Open three years in a row? Baldo. Oh. Yeah, 91 to 93. Montgomery won the BMW uh, PGA three times in a row. And Ian Woosnam won the Monte Carlo Open. Oh, that was a good one to win, I'd say. I'd say that yeah. was a hell of a weekend. Um, so that's Larry. He's, he's in good form and he's looking forward to uh, the Olympics. But Rory McIlroy, if we're talking about the week that was, fourth win of the season. He beat Xander Schauffele in the playoff in Shanghai. He had bogey free rounds of 67 68. He's gone from 33rd to 5th in the race to Dubai. His season now 24 appearances, four wins. Finished in the top five 11 times out of 24. He's had 18 top tens. So outside of the majors, it has been by a distance his most consistent uh, season. It's been an incredible season, really. He's now won 25 times worldwide since 09. He's the first European player to win three World Golf Championships. If only the pesky majors weren't kind of <laughs> hanging over this season. Because um, he's just had the most ridiculous season. He can't catch Kepka at number one this year, but he's closed the gap. Massively. So basically, of all the ranking points in 2019, McIlroy is by far ahead of everyone. He's at 480. Kepka's next 380. Uh, the rest are like Justin Thomas 300, just Justin Johnson 301. So he's been phenomenal. Uh, I didn't see much of this. I don't know. Did you catch too much of it? Yeah, I saw parts of the final round yeah. uh, when they went towards the playoff. Shoffle, I think, was ill all week. He had somehow managed to grind it out. Rory, the last few holes, played brilliantly. But he's just... It's just so easy to him at the moment. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to look at him right now and think, what can happen in the next five months that he doesn't go to Augusta mm. and be right there? Mm. Yet, unfortunately, something almost tends to happen that he arrives at Augusta and it's, it's not right yeah. there. And Again, I hate being negative about Rory, but ultimately this doesn't matter. Mm. And for him, I don't think this matters. Like It's all about next April, Augusta, and that everything that has happened we'll just be questioning all this twice as much mm. if he doesn't deliver when it gets to Augusta, <laughs> is unfortunately how we judge him. In fact, listening to you talk there about your mindset, I sort of think Rory needs that as well. <laughs> it, it needs to be that aggressive mindset. That's how he needs to approach it. Mm. Still think back to Port Rush and overthinking that mm. first shot. Yeah. Yeah. Just go out there and be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Be what you are in all these tournaments. That, like, The reason he can be aggressive is that they don't mean that much to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ultimately. Yeah. Like He goes out and he plays his natural game. He's free. But I don't know how you, I mean, you can tell yourself, I just need to be free and play like I do in the other events. Yeah. And then you, then you get to the first <laughs> tee of Port Rush. Yeah. You can't kid yourself. Yeah, yeah, no. I and mean, not in that environment. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, to have that many top tens in one year. Mm. No, he's, he's reversed, in, he's reversed yeah. into his fair share of them is the only thing. You know, he's been out of contention on a yeah. Saturday and then he'll blitz it with a 62 and a Sunday. Right. And we yeah. criticise him for that and I don't know if that's fair or not. We're judging him by his yeah. standards, which is obviously very a very high standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where are you in Rory's game at the moment? Do you see much of him? Do you watch much golf? Um, I watch a little bit, but on, you know, obviously most of the time I'm playing on You're Sunday, playing, yeah, so yeah. Um, I don't get to watch a whole <laughs> How lot did Rory of it. Do? <laughs> yeah, um, the Open was great because with the time change, it was right before I was teeing off and in the morning, so I turn it on and yeah. um, you know, it's unreal to see him try to come back on the second day and be so emotional. And mm. um, but I just think he's. He's got it, right? He's so good, and I think it's only a matter of time with the majors. He's mm. going to either he, you know, maybe take the fiery attitude and go get it, mm -hmm. but um, it's going to happen. I was listening to Faldo recently talking about him, and we always talk about his putting, but Faldo was saying the reason he thinks Rory has struggled at Augusta is his wedge play has not been as sharp as it needs mm -hmm. to be, but that it's coming good now. The wedge play looks really good, and he's really dialed in. But that's, you know, at Augusta, if, you, if your wedges are off, you're going to be in big trouble around those greens and everything. So. I mean, who knows? There's kind of always been something, so you can't say, oh, this is the year it's all going to click. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how the, and if it gets a chance, because Kepka's obviously out injured at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether that's, because I think since you've been away, Joe, that's been the big talking point. It's all the Kepka thing. The yeah. constant, do we have a proper rivalry between Rory and Kepka? And Kepka just sort of nicely nudging it along. And, yeah. and Rory, I'd love him to get properly involved yeah. and do a proper takedown. 
I don't think he really has it in him. Mm. <laughs> He's too nice. Mm. Whereas Kepka, Kepka, Kepka always comes across as being quite a good guy as well, mm-hmm. but just loves to throw out a little bomb here and there. Yeah. That I think if Kepka pushes the right buttons, uh, <laughs> it's inevitable. Well, Larry actually said that Kepka lit a fire under Rory. Now I don't know—is that him speculating, or is he talking to Rory a bit more? And he got the impression that Rory. Who does this guy think he is? A little bit. I mean, I'm sure Rory's within his rights to go. Hang on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How many majors will Rory McIlroy end up with? Oh, man. He's on four right now, now, four now. But it's been 2014. So when you were finishing third in the US Open, <laughs> yeah. he was winning the PGA and the Open Championship that year. So Now you're both back. You're back. I know, yeah. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> Olympic goals yeah. for both. That would uh, be good. Can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're kind of, I'm, I'm kind of coming in at six, which is uh, so much. I, I would have said 10 a few years ago, you know? Yeah. Impossible to tell. He's the kind of guy who could win three in no time, and yeah. suddenly you reevaluate everything. So, like you got to think, if he has Relate this run answer. of form, he'll definitely win a US PGA. Yeah, easy. Mm-hmm. Like the sort of course setup they have there. Mm. If he's playing it well, so well, yeah. Um, I'm. I go a little above six. I think. I think I, he can still get to ten. <sighs> yeah. That'd be something. I think so. I mean, he's he's got a lot of time left still. Yeah. And you're right, though. Like he could go. Win two in one year, three in one year. Like you just don't know. Yeah, and we don't know, Joe, because also while you're away, it turns out that when Tiger Woods is fit, he is still the best golfer oh in the God. world. Yeah, true. Yeah. It is insane. <laughs> insane. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. insane. I know. That, like, we had literally. So we'd had the comeback. Yeah. And then we've had this sort of six months of. Oh, that was nice while it lasted, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. He's an old man. We yeah. expected too much of him. Yeah. Has another operation. And he's back. back yeah. And like <laughs> destroys the field. Yeah. And a good field. Because I was, again, I've been away and you're half dipping in. And I said, he's won what? The Zozo Championship. Oh, you know, probably beat Nathan Murphy and. Oof, yeah. 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 You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. It was so Matt Siam in the field. No, everybody was. It McElroy, was like, Justin mm-hmm. Thomas. It's a proper big money event. Field, yeah. Three stroke win. He hadn't shot a single score lower than 67 since March 2019. So he was in mm. just at no form. Mm-hmm. And. It was fairly phenomenal. Do you know the most interesting thing he said? So he's asked about the knee operation. You, you may have talked about this already, but I just thought it was a mad quote. I saw Dermot Calise with this at the weekend. Uh, he had his knee operation. So people are talking about how he's getting through the ball really well and he's, he's striking it well. But he was saying that the fact with my knee, I couldn't get down and read putts. It was something I wasn't able to do for months. So now I'm able to squat down again. I can see putts properly, which you don't see from higher up. So I just felt a lot more comfortable and I was able to have a better stance as well. So I mean, he just was able to get down, see the putts, and yeah, I guess a bit more confidence in mm-hmm. your putting stroke, you're going to feel good. And he was saying as well, uh, swing-wise, my speed started coming back as well. Uh, so It all, does all make sense. Good. Because, like watching him on television, he's looked like an old man. Mm. Yeah. Being up at Port Rush for the Open Championship, both of us were there after he finished his rounds. And I think after the Thursday, everybody in the press then thought, this guy's on the verge of retiring. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Such a shell of a man. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. the Friday, he was, oh, I just need a break from golf. I'm just shattered. Like, you haven't played in five weeks. <laughs> yeah, You've I just remember played that. Two rounds. Yeah. <laughs> like that. But yeah. actually, it turned out, yeah, physically, there was something quite wrong with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching that interview on TV and I'm thinking to myself, well, this is my like seventh week in a row. <laughs> like, yeah. And you're flying yeah, yeah, private yeah, jet yeah, yeah, everywhere yeah. and you're moaning. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he's unreal. Tiger Woods. Did you see the uh, real highlight from, I presume you did see the real highlight from the Zuzo Championship? No. In the mini pro am that they had beforehand? Oh, Brown O'Driscoll. Brown O'Driscoll holding his I saw your tweet footer. about it first, yeah. Yeah, twenty-five footer. In, mm-hmm. So they had got four former rugby players to play. Uh-huh. I think a ho- it was actually. Was it during the tournament? Oh, it was during the Skins game. Remember they yeah, played yeah, that yeah. Skins game yeah. in advance for big money. Oh, yeah, so they got yeah. Brian O'Driscoll and three other um, rugby players to play a hole. And O'Driscoll hold like a 25-footer in front of Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> as good That's as it great. gets. He, yeah. was, he was in last night, so needless to say, it was all I wanted to talk to him. What did he say? <laughs> he always said Tiger looked incredibly fit in person. He looked really good. And when you see Tiger, have you seen Tiger much in person? Not a whole lot. When yeah. you do see him in person, he's far slimmer and more athletic looking, mm. and that bit taller than you expect. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a real athlete, but he said he looked incredibly fit. He didn't talk to him too much because it was just one hole, but a little bit. Um, what more can you say? And he held the putt, which he was obviously cacking himself over because Tiger Woods was there, <laughs> <laughs> as he might be. Uh, Justin Ray, who's the best stats man in golf. Mm. Have you seen some of these on, on Woods' win? Like, because I just don't think we fully appreciate the context of what he's done, really. So Sam Snead obviously got to 82. It took Sam's need 425 events. Uh, Woods has done it in 359. 
like if you take Mickelson as the next prodigious winner on tour, he has half as many wins as Woods. He has played twice as many events as Woods. And then I really like this one. So Dustin Johnson is the only player who's under 40 who has 20 or more PGA Tour wins. So if Dustin Johnson, that's phenomenal by the way, under 40, 20 mm. wins, brilliant. If Dustin Johnson keeps going at the pace he's at, he will catch Tiger Woods' total of 82 in the year 2056 when <laughs> Dustin Johnson is 72 years old. Wow. So like how Woods has managed to do this is uh, just amazing. There's been a real takedown um, yeah. of Sam Snead, I've noticed as well, over the couple of weeks. I was reading because it. Obviously, we've spoken about Sam Snead's record for years and years, and it was probably one of the few that, aside from the obvious, that Tiger hasn't had, so it means that every regular PGA Tour event, they can bring it up in the television and go, here is where he is. Yeah. And it turns out, actually, Sam Snead, he won all these tournaments, but, yeah, it was four players in some of them. <laughs> in fairness to the PGA Tour, they did a brilliant article on this, which you can check out on their website. So Sam Snead, it seems, was going around telling people he won 89 tournaments for a long time. <laughs> Um, a lot of people are saying it should be, uh, you know, there's a faction of people they say in this piece on the PGA Tour saying it should be somewhere in the 70s. Like five of Sneed's victories are in team events. Oh. Yeah. So five of his 82 are in team events. Uh, Sneed reckons he had 89. Like even there's the West Virginia closed pro. That was his very first win. He has no trophy, there's no pictures. You know, <laughs> did it even happen? I mean, I think they found it did eventually, but like so many of these events were just kind of took place in He wasn't taking obscurity. on the best players in the world every week. No. Uh, so, you know, Sneed reckoned it was 89. A lot of people think it should be in the 70s. It was, uh, for a good few years, the official PGA Tour had him at 84. And then in 1987, they reduced it to 81. And now they've moved it back to 82, which was for a British Open, which he won. So fair enough. But it just shows like... We're talking about Woods. How can you compare him with, like, he, was it 87? Was it mm. 75? Uh, I didn't realise Sam Snead, uh, he didn't do the Grand Slam, obviously, but he won the other three. He finished um, second in the US Open four times. Oh, ouch. That's, that's yeah. ouch. That's <laughs> Phil Mickelson, ouch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, speaking of Phil, did you see Phil dropped out of the world's top 50? Yeah. yeah first first time. time since 1993. It's, it's insane. I think it's it goodness. is the end for Phil. Yeah. Like I was it, born in 92, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, wow, okay. Yeah, it's nuts. I think this is Phil... I, I, I'm not sure the Tiger thing is going to happen with Phil. Even all the ways he's going to have a week. Maybe a week. Maybe a week. Somewhere along the way. It's still in there. Yeah. Not as consistent, but it's in there. Who were your favourite players to watch growing up? Are, we, um, are you big into watching it? As well, or do you just like playing? A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, on the women's side, Annika was like my hero. I mean, how could she not be, really? Think yeah. about it. Um, See, I, yeah. I feel a bit cheated in a way because I just wouldn't have seen her, really. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bar the odd Salon Cup thing, but I didn't have Sky Sports a lot growing up, so mm -hmm. you'd, you'd hear about her. Not yeah, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was kind of obsessed with her, to be honest, which sounds a bit weird, but she was definitely the idol, and uh, I've got to meet her now, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, and I mean, I didn't watch a whole lot of men's golf, to be honest. Um, Dad always had it on the TV constantly. It's boring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, Mom, yeah, mom always talks about it. She's like, God, I watched so much golf before. Now I never watch golf. Um, yeah, um, she's uh, she's not a golf person at all. Um, she gets it 100 percent. Like and she was stuck she, with you too. Yeah, I know. Well. Yeah, um, yeah. She, I mean, I think she hits maybe one ball every year. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ceremonial. Yeah, tia, yeah. I tell you what, I have a really good story. Um, I think I was about nine or ten, and we were on holiday and. I was having a hissy fit on the golf course, you know, and uh, these nine and ten year olds do. Yeah. And she grabbed my seven iron, and this is a woman that does not play golf, and but she's had lots of lessons because Dad always wanted her to play. Yeah. And she grabbed the seven iron and she said, "This is how you do it." She stood out there and she hit probably the best shot of her life from, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, onto the green. And I'm and of course I'm annoyed because yes. I'm nine. I'm like, gosh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the extent of Mom's. Uh, Golfing. golfing, yeah. Oh, she's got to top that, so. <laughs> yeah, no, she's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was your dad a good golfer? Did he play? Um, he played off like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, okay. so. Um, maybe you got it from your mum. Yeah, maybe. You know I, I mean? know. The I actual know. talent yeah, is yeah. there. Um, Mama, love that you said that. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? The natural um, swing was from your mother's side. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And did Tiger grab you when he came on the scene? Yeah, definitely. I think um, that, I mean, just it's, like everybody it's else. Hard to ignore um, that. Yeah, it's hard to ignore. Uh, you know, I have to say, I. I really didn't think he was going to come back. Um, it proved me wrong there, mm. that's for sure. Um, you know, and a lot of people too, but, um, God, you know, just to do what he's done, it's unreal. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it does, without getting ahead of ourselves, look like he can now have a good 2020 again. Mm. Mm -hmm. so any year we can get a bit more, any year now is kind of a bonus, but it really looked like he was finished. So everything I saw was that his body looked great. He felt okay afterwards. 
It's yeah. not like, you know, when he won the Masters, you saw him like limping off and he, it was like, he looked like a guy who'd emptied himself. Yeah. It almost looked like he won this a little bit within himself. It was a comfortable performance. Well, I'm kind of half joking, but like he is, it seems, the best player in the world when he's fully fit. Mm -hmm. Like when his body is all right. But the problem is, yeah. Yeah. how often is his body going to be? It feels as though there's always mm. something and a little, you just hope he can get to Augusta mm. in some sort of shape. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, who knows? He's had pretty much every body part injured, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what's left. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. All righty. So I think we're good. We've kept you long enough, I think. So uh, again, you're here with thanks to the Sports Extra Pass on Now TV. So you're going to be in Dundrum with Devon Toner and Stephen Hunt. Mm -hmm. Level three this Saturday, midday to three, special skills challenge and prizes given away. So everybody's welcome to go along and I presume... Uh, shout at you and say mean things and laugh at yeah, go you for throwing it. a rugby yeah. ball and Devon yeah. Turner playing golf. I'm kind of scared that by Sunday I'm going to be like a meme of some golf player playing <laughs> yeah. rugby ball. Rugby ball. Um, you know, but hey, it's all good. It's fun um, and it should be a good time. And like you said, I think there's going to be good prizes. Good. You better be hitting flop shots. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle yeah. of the shot, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Actually, that'd be there's, interesting. There's, there's your the viral thing. video. They haven't thought of this. Go on. Maybe I should email so I can get no, some no, cash no. out Come of it. Yeah. <laughs> you hitting a flop shot over Devon Toner. Oh, yeah. No oh, kidding. Yeah. yeah. All 611. Oh, yeah. How close oh. would you go? Oh. I don't know. Let's because do Mickelson does this quite a bit, doesn't oh, he? Know, he, he, does. he gets people to stand yeah. right there. Yeah. Like, let yeah. Stephen Hunt go first from 20 <laughs> yards, <laughs> yeah, 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 20 yeah. yards <laughs> away. And then you go as close yeah. as you feel do good you about it. Do you think you could hit a flop shot over Devon Toner? How close, though? How close would you... Oh, How God, close I would you be I'd willing to go? I think I'd stand back a little bit. I definitely wouldn't stand as close as Phil would, but... Two metres? Yeah. Two metres. Oh, I don't know. I get nervous just thinking you'd about it. You'd have to catch it well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have and to practice. I have to visualize it. Like, see, because you know, it's not six eleven is pretty oh, tall. Serious. I'm trying in, to think in, about in a shopping yeah. center. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> lots of people around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lots of cameras. Irish rugby legend. <laughs> yeah. You have to look him in the eye. Yeah. You have to look him in the eye right before that you hit it. Techno well. music blasting in your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, oh. that is it. That's oh. a great I idea. I mean, yeah. I think it's a great idea. That may have to be done. Yeah, we'll have to see how much he trusts me. Yeah, yeah. After he th sees me throw a rugby ball, he's probably, no, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Devin Toner ruled that for six. Who had that idea? No yeah, idea. Yeah, no yeah. Idea. <laughs> Devin, she does this all the time. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's all fine. the time, yeah. Kevin Streelman laughing 10,000 miles away. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> He'd only seen it. No, yeah. good stuff. So you're, you're back states, and then the LPG T L PGTA tour gets um LPGA LPGA. Yeah. I'm reading about five different things here. Gets underway. Is it January it starts or yeah. is it okay? Third week in January. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So well, look. Got some time. Yeah, great. Well, we'll be keeping an eye. I guess we'll see in Sky Sports. We might check in at some stage across the year when yeah, you that'd win. That'd be great. Come on, when you Sounds win. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, brilliant stuff. Uh, Stephanie, thanks so much. Nathan, good to have you back. Ah, uh, listen, good mm -hmm. to be back. All right, we're done.